Hello there, kia ora. Over the weekend, our ever-empathetic finance minister did a post-budget interview on Q&A where she showed just how much she really cares for landlords and party donors. You see, this was exemplified by her statement about how this government really thinks people should get out and work more if they want to earn more money. In fact, this is what she said. You know what, how they'll receive more? By getting a job. So I thought today I'd explain why this is really just another example of a cruel campaign to vilify beneficiaries that right-wing governments seem to love doing. They seem to want to tell people that anyone on a benefit is taking from hard-working New Zealanders. And that's simply not true. In fact, being on a benefit is one of the most horrible circumstances anybody can find themselves in this country for a number of reasons. You see, about 12% of the working age population in this country is on a benefit. That's people aged between 18 and 65. And about 830,000 people are currently on a pension. But only about a third of people who are not currently employed are on job seeker benefit. That's because the benefit system was designed initially, and still seen by many, as a bit of a safety net. So it's there to help when you need it, until you don't need that help anymore. But that's why in Wellington, for example, last month, we saw the biggest increase in the country of people on job seeker benefits when broken down by region. It's almost like there's somebody there who's really slash happy with one of the largest employers in town seeing an increase in the number of people needing that safety net. Hmm. But the safety net isn't just for people recently the victim of the government's need to drive up unemployment numbers and bring down inflation, counteracting its borrowing to cover budget costs for things like tax cuts. Now, you see, over half the people on these benefits can't work. The lowest end estimate's about 54%, the highest end estimate could be up to 70%. And 20% of those beneficiaries are people who are solo parents who face challenges with things like child care and work-life balance, making them what we call underemployed. They still receive that financial help from that safety net, and so they get lumped into that group, but they might be able to do a little bit more work if they could actually find a way to juggle those particular issues. This group makes up the vast majority of the 267,000 people who have received a benefit for over a year. Only 54,000 would be considered work-ready for more than a year on this benefit. And that's because this benefit includes people who live with disabilities or their full-time carers, part-time carers, people who are too sick to be able to go out and work. Unless, you know, you've got cancer, Christopher Luxon thinks he could probably still do 10 hours a week. Hmm. Or people who are solo parents, they also fall into this group. It works out to be about 0.1% of the entire population that's being considered work-ready for more than a year receiving a benefit and that benefit doesn't really benefit them at all. You see, the average weekly benefit for a single person over 25 is now $353 a week. The average wage for a week in this country is 1020 meaning that the benefit level is 35% of the average wage level. Ruth Richardson, back when she was finance minister in the 90s, uh, she hurt beneficiaries so much that that wage discrepancy went down to 53%. We're now at 35%. That's tough. Nobody is going to be making bank off the kind of money that you get by being on a benefit. To make things even worse, the living wage, which is what's estimated to cost you per week just to be able to cover your basics, is $1,112 per week. So there's an even bigger discrepancy there. None of those 54,000 people who have been on work-ready benefits for more than a year are going to be making a lot of money off this. Oh, and remember, this is the government that also chose to re-index benefits to inflation instead of wages, although they keep pensions indexed to wages. That's because wage growth is seen as a more reliable marker of the impacts of the rising prices for living. Inflation is an element that causes it. So if you think of inflation as like that pebble at the top of an avalanche, the wage increases down the bottom is how you measure how much dirt came down with the rest of that avalanche. This indexing is going to increase that gap because you're going to see a larger change between how much people actually earn and how much they get on a benefit. And at the moment, as I said, it's only 35%. So we've established that benefits aren't enough to harm people long term, that the people accessing them, the vast majority of them actually need those benefits because they don't have any other choice when it comes to being able to have any kind of income. But what about the line, just go and get a job? Well, turns out that there aren't enough jobs. You see, every metric that we use to measure the number of jobs available has been in decline for the last six months. 
It's almost like something happened seven or eight months ago which had a negative impact on the economy. Anyway, the number of jobs that have been advertised has plummeted in every sector in every region. Seekits reported that they've seen huge numbers of applicants now that outstrip the number of jobs on offer. Simply put, there aren't enough jobs for the amount of people looking for work. And Treasury's forecast is that by the end of this year, that number will increase by another percentage point. Oh, and remember, this government also removed the Reserve Bank's guideline to incorporate unemployment numbers into its measuring tools around inflation and setting OCR, meaning that higher unemployment numbers don't impact those interest rates which landlords got deductibility back on to the tune of $2.9 billion. So this finance minister is driving unemployment up. She's set conditions up to make life worse for those who are needing the most help. She's removed them from consideration as an issue for Treasury to look at uh, in terms of the wider operations that it does and using those numbers to offset inflationary nature of things like tax cuts funded by borrowing. And she thinks that the answer is that poor people just need to get a job. Hmm.